Welcome to Duval Daily, presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLuga. Thanks so much for tuning in here on Thursday, October 31st. Happy Halloween to everybody. Happy spooky season. Today only. Go check out GenJag.com slash shop. 40% off everything with code spooky season. That's all lowercase spooky S-Z-N. Got some fun stuff up on the site. So today we're getting into Jaguars, Eagles, the big preview here. Kind of overarching preview of this football game between the Jags and the Eagles. It is a mid-afternoon kickoff, a little after 4 p.m. Jags at Eagles. It's a bad matchup. Jaguars are 2-6. and Eagles are playing good football. Eagles are heavy 7-8 point favorites, depending on where you look, as they should be, in my opinion. Makes sense to me. I know this is the NFL, and games are tight. A lot of games are really close. Jaguars kept up with the Packers last week, but not the same Jaguars team entering this game that was entering the game last week, right? So um, we'll be interesting. We'll talk about Jags offense versus Philly defense and vice versa. The Doug Peterson revenge game. Uh, Last time the Jags went up to Philly, good start. Very good start. Andre Sisco picked six. Got up to a nice lead there, but then you absolutely fell apart in what was a monsoon, so... Shouldn't have that same weather. Trevor Lawrence not being able to hold on to the football in that game. Um, you know, can the Jags compete, I think, is the real question. And and if they can, they'll have a chance. But they got to improve on a lot if they want to be able to beat a team like the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, no Christian Kirk certainly hurts. I think they've got to have Brian Thomas Jr. in this game, who was limited yesterday, non-contact, practice jersey, dealing with the chest injury. He sustained after catching that touchdown pass last week. Um, yeah, got to have BT. They also need one of their starting guards to play, too. It seems like Sheriff is more likely. Um, both got banged up. But I think Sheriff should be able to play Ezra Cleveland dealing with the ankle. Um, not going to be easy, right? Not going to be easy in this football game for this this Jacksonville Jaguars team that really is <laughs> – I've said it a lot. I think that last week was really that game. Like if you won that game and you got to 3-5, and five, you actually have a chance here. But at 2-6 and six, with Eagles, Vikings, Lions, and Texans up next – I think you can stick a fork in the Jaguars. I really think you can. Um, of course, who knows? You never know. But the Eagles, they are my Super Bowl pick in the NFC. And they were before the season. That's not me amending anything based on what we've seen so far. That was my pick to win the Super Bowl before the season. I thought that they did a good job hiring their coordinators this offseason. Kellen Moore on offense, Vic Fangio on defense, and they're just talented from top to bottom. Howie Roseman continues to, to stack talent on this football team. I'm not a big fan of Nick Sirianni, but again, when you've got good coaches on both sides of the ball and, and as much talent as they have, doesn't matter as much. So I think the Eagles are, are I think they're going to beat the Jaguars. Not going to bury the lead there. Um, looking at their offense, just too much talent for this Jaguars defense to contend with, you know, I think one area you can look at, can Josh Hines Allen beat Fred Johnson? I think that's something to think about, certainly. But their offensive line is beastly. Obviously, they have the injury at left tackle, but a great offensive line, Um, great offensive line coach, Jeff Stoutland, Stoutland University. They're tough, well-coached, talented, big, physical, athletic. Their running back is an absolute beast, and I I said it this offseason, you know, it's funny. Uh, the Giants, I was so critical of their offseason because I was pissed about what they did um, letting Saquon Barkley and Xavier McKinney go. Xavier McKinney helped beat the Jags last week, right? I think Saquon Barkley is going to help beat the Jags this week. So uh, kind of ironic for those New York Giants, right? But um, Saquon Barkley, I'm so happy for him. And obviously I'm not happy for him this week, but getting out of New York, going to a place that can really utilize his talent, he looks rejuvenated. He looks as good as he ever has. He's just awesome to watch. One of the best football players in the league. Um, The receivers, unbelievable. Dallas Goddard appears to still be questionable, but you have A.J. Brown. 
and he is going to roast the Jaguars defense. Even if Tyson Campbell's on him, I, I just AJ Brown is that dude. And then if even if Tyson does have a good game against AJ Brown, nobody's gonna cover Devontae Smith. And then Hertz is a dual threat quarterback who, you know, if you sit there and make him take those like deep two two point shots, like mid range game. Uh, in between 10 and 20 yards on the sidelines, maybe you can get some stuff done. But the way the Jaguars defense has coverage bust and just struggles to cover in man coverage, I think that he's going to have a, a decent day throwing the ball. And I think he's going to be able to run the ball. His explosive explosiveness looks back. The last couple games, he has looked like that real athlete that, that you know that he is. And so I think with all this talent and with Kellen Moore uh, coordinating it, giving them so many more answers for problems that defenses can present them than they had last year. Yeah, tough sledding for a Jags defense that just finds ways to lose football games, subbing at inopportune times, subbing too often, taking your best players off the field on third down, playing guys out of position like Eric Armstead. Secondary is absolute hot garbage right now. I think it's poorly coached. I think that the trickle-down effect on leadership, starting with Trent Baalke and working its way into the coaching staff, is absolutely atrocious in Jacksonville. Um, you need that front to come with it. You need that front to win immediately. And you got to tackle better than you did last week. But look, the way the Jaguars play defense, I think Jalen Hurts with versus this man coverage, he's going to eat running the ball. <laughs> I really do. So I think the Jaguars defense has a really bad matchup against the Eagles offense. But a couple saving graces possibly is the pass rush. Um, if Eric Armstead actually plays on the interior, uh, Tyson Campbell being back and playing well, Foya Luke and being back still though, I just don't see it for this one. But before we get into the offense versus the Eagles defense, y'all got to check out underdog fantasy for pick them and a whole lot more. You can use code Duval daily on their easy to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com, and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick em entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. It's currently Boostober on Underdog, where there's a promo to play nearly every day. Tons of options for Jaguars and Eagles. Trevor Lawrence touchdowns, Trevor Lawrence yards. Want to pick Tank Bigsby to score a touchdown? Underdog has vulture protection to rescue your pick em. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code Duval Daily to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus. 19 plus Alabama, Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games. 21 plus Massachusetts and Arizona and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org. Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP. That's 1-800-639-8783 or text next step to 53342. New York, call the 24-7 Hope line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope ny four six seven three six nine. So Jags offense versus this Eagles defense. The Jags offense is banged up. The interior looks like it's in a little bit of trouble, as we mentioned. You do not have Christian Kirk, as we mentioned. Now, if the line can hold up to some extent, the offensive line, and that's going to be tough because it's not just Jalen Carter rushing the passer for Philly, right? Uh, they have a bevy of good pass rushers. Um, Bryce Huff not really getting it done at a high level this year, but Brandon Graham still playing very well. Mora Ojomo has come on for them, creating some pressure as well. Um, you've got Josh Sweat. You've got guys uh, that, that they can get after the quarterback, bottom line. They're sacking the quarterback. They're pressuring the quarterback. Uh, it, it's tough sledding, but if the offensive line can hold up a little bit and you have Brian Thomas Jr. playing, you have Brian Thomas, Evan Ingram, Parker Washington, and Britton Strange, if those are your top targets receiving, I'm okay with that. You know, not great, but I think we can live with that. If Tim Jones or Gabe Davis are up there, or both of them are up there in target share, it's going to be ugly. Uh, you can't have that. Cannot have that. I want to see plenty of 12 personnel, maybe even some 13 personnel with Luke Farrell out there as well. The tight end position needs to be your friend now because you can dictate some matchups, get defenses in, in, in disadvantageous situations at times. Um, can you get Tank Bigsby going in this one? The Eagles linebackers have been playing well. They certainly have. Uh, bringing in Zach Bond, that was a great move for them. He's been so steady for them. And then N'Kobe Dean has played better than than a lot of folks expected as well. I think he's continuing to grow. 
Uh, just looking at this this defense, solid everywhere. As I mentioned, we just talked about the linebackers doing a good job. Very good up front. Um, secondary, Quinion Mitchell, such a good young player. Loved him in the draft. Cooper DeGene, such a good young player. Loved him in the draft. You've still got Darius Slay playing at a fairly high level. Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Reed Blankenship playing really good for them as well. Uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. And again, it's well coached by Vic Fangio. And they have the game wrecker on the defensive line, Jalen Carter. So when you have that much steadiness and talent across the board, you have a dude like Jalen Carter and you have Vic Fangio, who uh, it's not the most complex defense. You will see the picture change post-snap. Uh, but uh, not the most complex defense necessarily, and uh, not a defense that of the structure wise that Trevor Lawrence really should struggle with. But because of the talent, because of the stability, because of Jalen Carter, and because of the Jaguars' offensive injuries, I do think that the Jags are are going to have a tough time here. Uh, I really do. So that's kind of this game preview. Uh, you hope that maybe Logan Cook can flip the field a ton for you. You can avoid turnovers. Trevor Lawrence has been good at avoiding turnovers most of the year. Obviously, I had two last week, but only four turnovers this year for Trevor Lawrence. Um, avoid turnovers. Play field position. Give Cam Little his opportunities. Maybe you have a chance, but it's it's not going to be easy for this Jacksonville Jaguars team to get it done in Philly. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section below. If you enjoy the content, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out jinjag.com slash shop. Pick up some new Duval gear. It is spooky season. Happy Halloween uh, on the shop. 40% off with code spooky season. That's all lowercase spooky S Z N. Be on my channel member here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one.